High-intensity action films have always been in demand, and thanks to the likes of John Wick and Fast and Furious, audiences no longer need a meaningful plot if the fights are awesome. However, the craze for action films began, in truth, in the 1980s, with actors like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Kurt Russell, as well as filmmakers like John Carpenter and James Cameron, movie theatres could no longer remain calm in action movies. In today's video, we'll be talking about 16 cult classic action movies from the 1980s, and we advise you to stay tuned until the very end. And with that said, let's begin another marvellous video. Now just before we get into the video, we do have a small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. It's just a little click for you, but for us it means a hell of a lot. Thank you so much, now let's begin the video. Escape from New York, 1981 Directed by John Carpenter, Escape from New York is a film showcasing a rescue mission from the President of the United States during their war with the Allied forces of China and the Soviet Union. Set in 1988, the US has been witnessing a massive increase in crime rate, for which they had turned Manhattan into a maximum security prison, walling off the island from the outside world. Later in 1997, when President John Harker was flying to a peace summit via Air Force One, a terrorist successfully managed to hijack the plane. The President was handcuffed and dropped into Manhattan via an escape before the plane crashed. He was taken in by the henchman of New York's kingpin of crime, Duke. All attempts made by the police failed, with the warning being issued that any further interventions would cause them to kill the President. Duke's master plan was to free all the inmates of Manhattan prisoners using the President as the shield. With the crisis being mentioned, the story next shifts to the former Special Forces soldier Snake Plissken, played by none other than Kurt Russell. Snake was previously convicted of robbing the Federal Reserve and Police Commissioner Bob Hawke offered him a deal to save the President in exchange for a presidential pardon from him. However, it was not just the offer as Hawke injected Snake with a micro-explosive capable of destroying his carotid artery in 22 hours and it would only be removed if he returned the President. The story progresses with Snake teaming up with Cabby, a jovial character who drives a yellow taxi, his former associate Harold Hellman and his girlfriend. They finally manage to save the president after which Snake walked away as a free man. The film is action packed and it was not only a box office success back in the 80s but also well reviewed by critics. Escape from New York is undoubtedly a cult classic and should be watched by all action lovers. First Blood, 1982. Next on the list we have a cult classic action film that gained a profit of $125.2 million from a filmmaking budget of $15 million. The story is about Vietnam War veteran John Rambo, played by Sylvester Stallone. After learning of the death of his old comrade, as John continued his travels and reached the town of Hope, Washington, things began getting messy. The sheriff, Will Teasel, escorted him out of town, explaining that it was his job to keep drifters and trespassers out of Hope. But John returned, leading to his arrest. Soon, Teasel's sadistic chief deputy, Art Galt, took charge and conducted brutal torture on John, which triggered flashbacks of the pain and torture he'd endured in the Vietnam War. At a point, John snapped and fought his way out of the sheriff's station, followed by Teasel organising a search party with his men and dogs. Galt conducted a search in a helicopter, and when he found John, he opened fire, defying Teasel's orders, which ultimately led him to his demise. Rambo tried to surrender, but Teasel's deputies shot at him, causing him to flee once again. As things escalated, the Washington State Patrol and Washington National Guard, along with Rambo's mentor and former commanding officer, Colonel Sam Troutman, were dispatched to assist Teasel in catching John. Contacting John, Troutman tried convincing him to surrender, but he denied setting about the abuse and torture Teasel's deputies inflicted upon Rambo. After a long chase and a lot of firepower, John expressed his sorrows watching his friends either die or suffer after returning from the war just when he was about to kill Teasel. John finally surrenders and was taken into federal custody. Despite the unending fight sequences, the film ended up leaving a deep impact on the suffering of soldiers and it's truly a masterpiece. Make sure to watch this film as it leaves a deep mark with its ending. Bloodsport, 1988. 
Directed by Newt Arnold, 1988's Bloodsport was an American martial arts sports action film that again stormed the box office back in the 80s. The story revolves around US Army Captain Frank Dukes, played by Jean-Claude Van Damme. As a child, Dukes and a few of his friends had snuck into the house of Sensei Sinzo Tanaka to steal a katana. Although they did manage to steal it, Dukes was apprehended when returning the item. Impressed by this young boy, Sinzo took him under his training along with his son Shingo. He taught them about different ways of ninjutsu and later, when Shingo died, Dukes was made an official member of the Tanaka clan. Duke's life in the army was interrupted when he received an invitation from an illegal martial arts tournament in Hong Kong called the Kumite. Defying orders, he left his place in the army and travelled to Hong Kong and was soon followed by command agents Helmer and Rawlins for his capture and arrest. As the film progresses, it showcases Duke's arrival at the tournament and journey through the matches. The strongest contender in the tournament was the ruthless Kumite champion Chong Li, who soon turned his attention to Dukes after the latter broke his record for the fastest knockout. The tournament continues with Dukes and Li moving up the table until they finally face off against each other in the final. When Dukes gains the upper hand, Li blinds Dukes with salt that he'd been carrying in a little pill. However, Dukes had been trained to fight blindfolded and after a brief struggle, he managed to defeat Li and win the tournament. The next day, he returns to the US. Conan the Barbarian, 1982. Cult classic action films without Arnold Schwarzenegger are just unimaginable. And thus, next on the list, we have the American epic sword and sorcery movie that is Conan the Barbarian. The plot revolves around a mysterious sword forged by Conan's father. Soon, a band of raiders led by Thulsa Doom kill Conan's parents and took young Conan to work as a slave in a large mill called the Wheel of Pain. Conan survives the brutality and grows up to be a strong, muscular man. He's trained as a gladiator, and after winning innumerable battles, he's freed. After retrieving an ancient sword from an Atlantean warrior's tomb, Conan begins his aimless journey wandering the world. After some time, he encountered a prophetic witch in a hut, along with the Hycranian thief and archer named Subutai. Upon the witch's advice, Conan and Subutai travel to the city of Zamora in search of doom, befriending a female brigand. Named Valeria, the trio raided the Tower of Serpents, stealing as many valuables as they could. Later that night, they celebrated but were soon captured by the city guards and brought before King Osric. The king had a request, and that was to rescue his daughter, Princess Yasemina, captured as a zealot in Doom's cult, in exchange for a reward. Although Subutai and Valeria showed less interest in the deal, Conan had his own reasons for vengeance against Doom, and he accepted the offer. Disguising as a priest, Conan infiltrated the temple but was soon discovered and captured. He was crucified on the Tree of Woe by Doom and was on the verge of death before Subutai rescued him. Subutai and Valeria brought Conan to Akira, the Wizard of the Mounds, who could heal him by summoning spirits. Akira added that the ritual was bound to exact a heavy toll later, and Valeria agreed to pay for it. Restored back to health, the trio planned on continuing Osric's task and once again infiltrated the temple. After a brief battle with Doom, who transformed himself into a giant snake, Valeria was mortally wounded. As she died in Conan's arms, she realised that this was the heavy toll she had agreed to pay. The film proceeds to its climax with Conan preparing himself to take down Doom once and for all taking the blessings of revenge from Krom, the Sumerian god. After killing several of Doom's warriors, Conan is again the strongest of them all, Doom's subordinate, Rexor. After being saved by a reanimated Valeria, who is stated as Valkyrie, Conan kills Rexor and retrieves his father's broken sword. The film ends with Conan decapitating Doom and returning with Princess Yasmina. Die Hard 1988 1988's Die Hard is still considered one of the best action movies ever. Directed by John McTiernan and written by Jeb Stewart, the plot is based on Roderick Thorpe's 1979 novel Nothing Lasts Forever. The story begins with John McClane, a detective from New York City Police Department, planning on reconciling with his estranged wife, Polly, at a Christmas party held by her employer, the Nakatomi Corporation. However, things take a different turn when the venue, Nakatomi Plaza, is seized by German radical 
Hans Gruber and his heavily armed team. The terrorists plan on looting the $640 million in untraceable bearer bonds within the building's vault. And while everyone else was turned to hostages, John slowly infiltrates and begins taking down the terrorists one by one. The film continues with a long process of saving the hostages and stopping the terrorists from executing their heist. It ends with each and every one of them being killed and John leaving with his wife Holly safely. Amongst all the tenets of a high intensity action film, the movie stands out for its plot, which revolves around a regular, frustrated man and not an action god. Bruce Willis, who played the role of John, was then a TV actor and didn't have the attributes of the highly muscular men who dominated the industry, which kind of helped uplift the story and the reality of it. The film was well received by critics and needless to say was a box office hit. It's a must watch for any and all action film lovers. Terminator, 1984. Any discussion on action movies from the 80s, or even of all time, would be incomplete without mentioning the Terminator franchise. The first installment was released back in 1984 and it took audiences by storm. Directed by James Cameron, this film exemplifies why it is and always will be Arnold Schwarzenegger who comes to our minds first when we talk about a Terminator. This movie showcases a dystopian future where the artificial intelligence organization Skynet has taken over the world. It has created androids called the Terminator to annihilate humanity altogether. The only resistance from humanity was carried out by a man named John Connor and his team, the Techcom Resistance. With humanity on the verge of victory, Skynet formulates a plan to send back in time one of its Terminators to kill John's mother, Sarah Connor, before she's given birth to him, and so prevent him from ever existing. In order to counter Skynet's move, John sends one of his best soldiers, Kyle Reese, back at the same time to protect Sarah. The film continues with Kyle and Sarah Connor struggling against the Terminator in the past. It ends with the Terminator being destroyed and Sarah Connor being saved. However, in the next installment, humanity continues their struggle against the machines. Now, back in the 1980s, this was an extremely fresh idea and it became a cult classic of a movie. And there's none that even today can really deny we do look forward to a Terminator movie. Robocop, 1987. In keeping with androids and artificial intelligence, the cult classic action film Robocop revolves around a cyborg. Written by Edward Neumeyer and Michael Miner and directed by Paul Verhoeven, 1987's Robocop was a big hit and even now we see many different remakes and iterations of the same movie. The plot is set in a near dystopian future in which Detroit is facing a severe financial and social crisis. With crime rising exponentially, Omni Consumer Products, aka OCP, has been given control of the Detroit Police Department and uses technology to counter criminals and terrorists. At some point, when OCP Senior President Dick Jones was demonstrating their new law enforcement droid for police, the tech backfired, killing one of the executives. An ambitious junior executive, Bob Morton, took advantage of the situation and showcased his new project to OCP's chairman. Meanwhile, an officer, Alex Murphy, played by Peter Weller, met his death after confronting a notorious criminal, Clarence Bodeker, and his gang. Soon, Bob incorporated his Robocop program and transformed Murphy's corpse into a heavily armoured cyborg named Robocop. The film continued with Robocop's missions and war against criminals. Watching the film is highly recommended if you preserve likeness for those concepts and actions that you saw in the 80s so much. The movie always showcases how Robocop, despite having his memory wiped, slowly learns about his past and can recall his identity. Highlander, 1986 Directed by Russell Mulcahy, 1986's Highlander is a fantasy action adventure film revolving around an immortal Conor McLeod and many of his kind who can only be killed when decapitated. Back in 1563, Conor McLeod, the leader of the McLeod clan in the Scottish Isles, had his first brutal fight with the Fraser clan. In this battle, he was mortally wounded by Fraser clan's outlander warrior, the Kurrigan, but he mysteriously recovers. This is not well received by his cousin Dougal or his lover Kate, who accuse him of witchcraft. As word of this spreads, his very clan seeks to kill him before his cousin Angus lets him leave out of mercy. MacLeod then meets Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez, a swordsman from Spain who explains that there are many like him, MacLeod and Kurrigan, who are immortal and destined to battle one another to attain the final fight for the prize, which includes the power of all the immortals through time. The two soon become friends and they work together, stopping the evil Kurrigan from taking over the prize, pushing humanity into darker days. In the end, it's MacLeod who faces Kurrigan and defeats him to win this ultimate prize. 
This film took its time to build a fan base, but it did eventually reach the annals of a cult classic. Big Trouble in Little China, 1986. Big Trouble in Little China was a movie based on truck driver Jack Burton, who's involved in helping his best friend Wang free his kidnapped fiance Miao Yin. It was a Chinese-American street gang called the Lords of Death who were behind this kidnapping. The story proceeds with Jack and Wang tracking down the Lords of Death to Chinatown and discovering different hurdles in their way. Simultaneously, a new mystery unfolds with the appearance of centuries-old Chinese sorcerer David Lo Pan. The danger exponentially increases, leading to the unleashing of dark ancient curses. Jack fights Lopan's deadly minions and a trio of kung fu before finally saving Miao Yin. Directed by John Carpenter and starring Kurt Russell, Kim Cattrall and Dennis Dunn, as well as James Hong, the film has its place with plenty of action-filled sequences. This movie also had a unique sense of comedy, and although it doesn't share its place with those other heavy hitters from the 1980s, it's still a decent piece of work from John Carpenter. Roadhouse, 1989. 1989's Roadhouse was not one of the best action films of the 80s, but after the trailer release for its recent remake with Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor, the film is surely under discussion. The story revolves around James Dalton, played by Patrick Swayze. He's a professional bouncer for a nightclub in New York, who, despite having a calm and composed nature, suffered from PTSD from killing a man in self-defense. It was no ordinary kill as he had ripped the man's throat out. Dalton's life changed after he joined as a security guard for businessman Frank Tillman's club, The Double Deuce, in Jasper, Missouri. The club had faced several instances of violence and rough customers, and Dalton was hired for unparalleled skills in handling such cases. Being in total control over the club's security, Dalton made several changes, including firing corrupt employees or the ones with bad behaviour. One of the fired employees was Pat, the nephew of crime lord Brad Wesley, and he soon begins intimidating Tillman into giving him his job back. Out of rage, Pat made an attempt to attack Dalton only to be badly injured. Hostility rises between the two and both Dalton and Wesley develop a liking for the same girl, Dr. Elizabeth Clay. Wesley initially tried hiring Dalton, failing which he began using his sources and influences to bring down Double Deuce. This builds up towards a final confrontation between Wesley and Dalton and ends with Wesley being defeated by Dalton. When he further tries to shoot, the locals shoot him dead. Directed by Rowdy Harrington, the film received mixed reviews at the time, but made a decent profit at the box office. <laughs> Cobra, 1986 Directed by George P. Cosmatos and written by Sylvester Stallone, 1986's Cobra is an extremely popular action film from the 80s. The plot revolves around a series of seemingly unrelated violent crimes in the Los Angeles area, with Lieutenant Marion Cobra Cabretti, played by Stallone, fighting to stop them. It all begins with a random shooting in a supermarket in Los Angeles, leading to a hostage crisis. LAPD summons Cobra, a member of their elite zombie squad, to resolve this crisis. The shooter in the supermarket seems to be conveying a message of social Darwinism, mentioning a new world. However, he's soon shot dead by Cobra, which leads to Cobra being reprimanded by his commanding officers for not prioritising the safety of the hostages. Soon, however, there's more attacks from this socially Darwinist cult, the New World, and it's inferred that their next target would be Ingrid Knudsen, a model and businesswoman. Led by the Night Slasher, the New World goes on an uncontrollable killing spree, causing Ingrid to stay under the protection of Cabretti. The film progresses with the wrath of the Night Slasher and his cult, as Cobra tries to hold the line of defence, killing several cult members in the process. In the climax, Night Slasher and Cobra go viciously hand-to-hand -hand in combat, after which Cobra impales him with a large hook. The film made massive profits at the time after its release, and it's known for its action-packed sequences and the fast-paced build-up. To Live and Die in L.A. 1985 1985's To Live and Die in L.A. is considered one of the lowest budget cult classic action films of the 1980s. Directed by and co-written by William Friedkin, the film was adapted from Gerald Petrovich's 1984 novel. The story revolves around two Secret Service agents, Richard Chance and Jimmy Hart, and their role as counterfeiting investigators in the LA field office. However, when Hart, when three days away from retirement, goes up against counterfeiter Eric Masters alone, he is killed by Masters and his bodyguard, Jack. This incident brings a drastic change for Chance, who's known for being reckless and casual. 
When John Vukovic joins in place of Hart, Chance vows to take down Masters at all costs. As the film progresses, Chance becomes more and more obsessed with taking down his nemesis. It's advisable to watch this movie for any and all action movie fans, as the film progresses towards an unexpected ending for both Masters and Chance. Flash Gordon, 1980. Sam J. Jones plays the titular Flash Gordon in a movie about the struggles to save Earth from the tyrannical Ming the Merciless of the planet Mungo. The story begins with Ming orchestrating several natural catastrophes on Earth by pushing Earth's moon towards itself. When football star Flash Gordon met with the former NASA scientist Dr. Hans Zarkov, he learns about the disasters, and he and Dale, along with Zarkov, board a spaceship and arrive on the planet Mongo. They were immediately captured by Ming's forces, with Ming ordering his troops to execute Flash. But his daughter, Princess Aura, saves Flash and helps him and Zarkov escape. As Flash and Princess Aura go through a series of adventures, Ming has made plans to marry Dale. As the film reaches its climax, Ming is defeated and impaled by Flash who promises mercy if further attacks on Earth are stopped. Ming, however, denies this, vaporizing himself with his own ring. As Flash and the rest celebrate the victory, an unknown person finds Ming, and the film ends with Ming's sadistic laughter. This movie was directed by Mike Hodges and was based on Alex Raymond's King Features comic strip of the same name. Upon its release, however, it wasn't well received by audiences apart from in the UK and Italy. Elsewhere, there just wasn't that much discussion about the movie at the time. Commando 1985. Next on the list we have another action-packed film starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Commando was an American action thriller film directed by Mark L. Lester and produced by Joel Silver. The movie revolves around a retired special agent, Colonel John Matrix, played by Arnold, who was forced to live a secluded life in the mountains with his daughter Jenny, played by Alyssa Milano. However, John's life of retirement was disrupted after a crisis involving the murder of his former units by unknown mercenaries and the assassins had not forgot about John as they attacked his secluded home, and they also kidnapped Jenny. Soon, John has geared up to save his daughter, eventually learning about a warlord called Arius, and bargains for the life of his daughter in exchange for his help to lead a military coup in Arius' home country. Although John initially agrees to help him, he knew his priorities. The movie builds up to John's struggles to do what is right and also keep his daughter alive. It ends with John killing Arius and saving his daughter, as well as his country. Commando is not a movie that you would dig too deeply into in the search for logic or realism. It is, however, an action blast of a movie showing Arnold's muscles and a lot of firepower. Missing in Action 1984. Directed by Joseph Zito, Missing in Action is a movie showcasing a rescue mission for US soldiers held as prisoners of war in Vietnam. It revolves around protagonist Colonel James Braddock, played by Chuck Norris, who escaped after two years of torture from a northern Vietnamese camp for prisoners of war. Ten years later, Braddock, with the help from the US government, leads a team to travel to Ho Chi Minh City to investigate reports that US soldiers are still being held as prisoners of war. After attaining adequate evidence, Braddock travels to Thailand where he meets an old army friend, Jack Tucker, who has risen to become the kingpin of the black market. As this movie progresses, Braddock and Tucker launch their mission deep into the jungles of Vietnam to free the imprisoned US soldiers from these camps. This film wasn't actually heard of much at the time, and it failed to make much of a cultural impact until it gained a good number of fans with the release of its sequels. Tango and Cash, 1989. Last but not least, we have 1989's Tango and Cash, which didn't have one but two of the most popular action stars of the 1980s, Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell. Directed by Andrei Konchalovsky initially and later by Albert Magnoli and Peter McDonald, this story features two of the best detectives around, Lieutenants Raymond Tango of the West Side and Gabriel Cash of the East Side, played by Stallone and Russell respectively. Despite being polar opposites of one another, they execute several daring drug busts for the narcotics division until they are brought to the attention of the criminal organization headed by Eves Parrott. Instead of acting in violence, Parrott 
frames them for murder, inhibiting their services. To make it worse, the two of them are imprisoned with the worst of the worst criminals, some they had even caught and imprisoned themselves. After facing relentless torture, the two manage to escape the prison with the help of Matt Sikowski, the assistant warden. The two of them put their differences aside to begin working together to take Parrot down and to clear their names. The film progresses with nerve-ending action sequences and the pursuit of finding Parrot. In the end, the criminal is shot dead by the pair of them and after their names are cleared, Tango and Cash return to the LAPD as heroes. It's sad to say, but this movie didn't quite meet the expectations that had been placed upon it, and critics pinned it for having a weak plot. However, it does contain some mind-blowing action sequences, and should be watched for the sole purpose of entertainment and enjoyment. Marvelous Verdict and so we come to the end of the video and we hope you enjoyed our content. Feel free to mention your favourite cult classic action films from the 80s in the comments section down below and also how it made an impact on modern day filmmaking. Thanks so much for watching the video and thank you so much again for watching the video until the end and stay tuned with us for more marvellous videos. And of course, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't done so already. But otherwise, have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.